Could we live without GPS? Now this sounds like a bit of a daft question. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Maybe we would just have to learn to use a map again. But seriously, the GPS service, which was launched in 1978 for the US military and fully available to the world since 1994, is now so embedded into our infrastructure that it's being called the world's utility service. So what might happen if it stopped working? This video is sponsored by Sterling for the time of your life. Now, while most people think that the GPS system is just there to act as a kind of navigation aid to help find your way around in a car, it's also found its way into virtually everything that moves and other vital areas, including the electrical power grid, banking, trading and mobile communications. But this is where a failure of a system, be that by natural causes like a solar storm or by deliberate sabotage, could have effects that would be far more profound than just having to dig out your old maps once more. In a recent report sponsored by the US government, it was estimated that a GPS outage would cost the US alone about $1 billion per day with the effects getting worse as time goes by until backups or new procedures were put into place. The report also found that since 1984, GPS has created about $1.4 trillion in economic benefits. Most of that since 2010, so you can see just how big this has become. At the heart of all this is time. All the GPS systems, be that the original US version or the Russian GLONASS or the European Union's Galileo, China's Bidu and other proposed national systems all work on the same principle and are in essence extremely accurate synchronized clocks in constellations of satellites spread around the globe sending out timing signals which are picked up by GPS receivers like the ones in your smartphone and satnav. It's the accuracy of these timing signals which is key and makes it also very useful for so many applications. The original US GPS system has at the moment 30 operational satellites in orbits approximately 20,200 kilometers above the Earth. Each one of these satellites has an atomic clock on board which is synchronized to the master clock at the United States Naval Observatory in Washington DC to within 10 nanoseconds or 10 billionths of a second. Each satellite broadcasts a continuous signal which gives its position in space and a timestamp. Each is also resynchronized every day to the master clock in Washington to take into account any drift in the satellite's clock that may have built up in the previous 24 hours and for special relativity because changes in the Earth's gravity would affect the clock's time to an outside observer, especially when we are dealing with nanosecond timing. To give you an idea of how critical this timing is, if there was a timing error of one microsecond or one millionth of a second, your satnav would have an error in the region of 330 kilometers or 200 miles. Because of how important GPS now is, the Shriver Air Force Base where the master control station is located is heavily guarded and is amongst the largest concentration of classified areas in the Air Force. Wherever you are on the Earth and because of their numbers and positioning, there are always between 6 and 10 GPS satellites in line of sight, but the signal from 20,000 kilometers in space is very weak and can be affected by the ionosphere. A GPS receiver searches for the four strongest satellite signals and uses the satellite's location information and the delay in the time it takes for the signal to arrive at the receiver from each satellite to calculate its position anywhere on Earth. The more accurate the timing, the more accurate the position will be. Because GPST or GPS time is linked to one of the most accurate atomic clocks in the world and is completely free for anyone to use, it is by default the most accurate clock available worldwide and much cheaper than owning and operating your own atomic clock. So how does this affect things like the power grid? 
Well, in the old days, power grids were separate entities operated by different companies in different states or even countries. As the requirement for power grew, the grids had to become connected. To do this, the electricity, which is sent as alternating current, normally at 50 or 60 Hertz, has to match the frequency and phase of a connecting grid, or they could cause serious damage to each other. A system called SCADA, or Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition, was developed and used to monitor the electrical supply and synchronize the different grids, but it could take up to 30 seconds between the measurement and the transmission of the data, and this led to regular blackouts as grids became overloaded as they became out of sync with each other. In the 1980s, synchrophasers began to be used. These systems gathered data once every second and instantly transmitted it to the control rooms, allowing much tighter control of power from many different sources, but they had to be synchronized together to work. As time has gone by, it's become easier to use GPS time as the timing source for synchrophasers, because this is a worldwide standard and it has allowed larger and larger grid configurations spanning multiple countries. However, GPS is a 1970s technology which was never intended for such critical infrastructure control. Not because it doesn't work, on the contrary, it works very well. The problem is the security because even on the military side, it uses standards which are decades old. The signal is also very weak and is very easy to jam completely or spoof, that is, to override it with a fake signal with fake timing information. This is something which in the beginning was thought only possible by other advanced nation states, but with the advancement of technology, almost anyone can now buy equipment that can do this. There have been instances where people have been using GPS jamming devices on trucks so as not to be able to be tracked to work, but the side effect was to block all the GPS signals for a few kilometers around them. This might be an inconvenience to other GPS users on the road, but when they came close to an airport, it caused major issues for tracking and guidance of smaller planes and vehicles using it. In 2011, it's thought that a drone operated by the CIA over the city of Kashmar in Iran was brought down by spoofing one of its GPS receivers, something which was later proven in 2012 in tests in the US. If the GPS timing of a grid synchrophaser was spoofed and off by more than 26.5 microseconds, it would compromise the integrity of the grid and could black out entire regions. But whilst GPS timing of synchrophasers is still limited but a rapidly growing area, financial trading is almost entirely reliant upon GPS timing for high frequency automated trading. These trading systems work by taking advantage of the market before the effect of news becomes apparent. In this time, millions of transactions can trade billions of dollars in seconds, and this requires sub-microsecond timing, with the trading computers often co-located in the network centers to avoid delays. Even the position in the room and the exact length of cable used to connect them to the network becomes critical. Some network providers hire out the use of their own atomic clocks as a source of timing, but many traders use GPS timing because there can still be a sub-microsecond delay as the private clocks sync up to the national standard used by GPS at midnight. And as I say, time is money, and in this case it's very true, as billions could be traded in the wrong way because of a microsecond timing error. Another area of concern is mobile communications. Mobile phone towers use GPS timing to synchronize their internal clocks, which are used to multiplex calls into a digital data stream, and then pass them from tower to tower before reassembling them and sending them onto the correct phone. If the timing is out between the towers, then the calls will become scrambled and lost. It's estimated that after a 30-day GPS outage, the communications network functionality would be between 60% and zero, depending upon how quickly the towers went out of sync. It's not just spoofing and jamming which causes concern. Space weather, and in particular the radio noise created by solar storms, can cause weak GPS signals to be lost, and in the worst case scenario, a massive solar storm on the same order of magnitude as the Carrington event of 1859 
could even wipe out most of the GPS satellites. Though if that were to happen now, losing the GPS signal might be the least of our problems. There is also the concern that the US military is far more reliant on GPS than either the Russians or the Chinese, and that any attack on the system, be that directly on the satellites themselves, or by uploading false data, could have an adverse effect on the US. For this reason, the US military now holds exercises in which the GPS receivers are turned off and alternative methods are used instead. In 2018, the GPS Block 3 upgrade started and will consist of 10 new satellites by 2023. These will have greater signal power and new secure coding for the military signals and an additional frequency for the civilian one, which will allow compatible receivers to remove the delaying effects of the ionosphere. Other GPS systems like the EU's Galileo can also work with the US GPS system to create larger, more available GPS signals. So is there anything we could do if we lost the GPS system? Well, there are other older land-based radio navigation systems which are still in use. One in particular called Loran dates back to World War II. In recent years, it's been updated to eLoran and because it's basically a timing service, it could be used as a substitute for GPS. Being land-based means that the signal is over a million times stronger than GPS and therefore much more difficult to jam or spoof, but it's only available in areas where the eLoran transmitters are placed and it's not available as a worldwide service. The UK now uses eLoran for navigation control through the Straits of Dover in the English Channel, the busiest waterway in the world, because of fear that a GPS system could be knocked out by a spoofer on either side of the channel. So could we survive without GPS? Yes, of course we could. But as we've never lived in a technological world where it suddenly disappeared, its loss on a worldwide basis would still be unknown. But one thing is for sure, the more time that goes by and the more integrated GPS becomes into our way of life, the bigger and the more profound the effect will be. Now, whilst GPS time is great for sub-microsecond timing, if you want more regular human time, then there's no better way than to do it in style than with a watch from the sponsors of this video, Sterling. With over 5,000 watches in their catalogue that covers every type of watch and lifestyle, Sterling is on a mission to inspire a new generation of watch lovers with stunningly crafted affordable watches at prices that anyone who appreciates great timepieces should be able to afford. Sterling has sold more than 15 million watches worldwide and with a two-year warranty on all their timepieces, you have a choice from simple time-only watches to affordable meteorite-dialed tourbillons, one of the most sought-after and difficult to make watches that compensate for the effect of gravity on the watch's accuracy. With free shipping worldwide for purchases over $100 and now exclusively for fans of Curious Droid, Sterling is offering 25% off any purchase with the coupon code DROID25. Just enter it at their checkout at the address now showing. Now I find Sterling watches to offer incredible value and I've been wearing this Modena 889 for a while now. In fact, you've seen it all the way through the video. I like the solid deep look and also the visible mechanism. It's a surprisingly comfortable watch and a great timepiece to show off without being elitist. So why not hop on over to sterling.com and find your ideal watch. <laughs>